Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're from. Welcome to Risa Live. Uh, my name is Ben Follett and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Risa. And uh, for today's Risa Live session, we are going to focus on composite steel member design in Risa Floor. And so if you're not familiar with Risa Floor, this will just be kind of a quick uh, dive into how we do composite steel beam design, which is obviously pretty typical for uh, multi-story steel commercial uh, residential projects. And so in this particular project, I have a, a single floor plan that I've already created, and we'll go ahead and add some new members. We'll go ahead and look at the different design um, elements, the design setup, uh, go ahead and run an analysis, and then look at results both from a composite beam design standpoint as well as uh, a vibration analysis standpoint. And so the first thing I'm going to do before going ahead and doing anything else, I'm going to jump into our global model settings. And so within our global model settings, the first thing we can look at are the codes that are applicable. And so we can choose the steel code that we're looking to do. I'm just going to stay in the 14th edition. We can also go ahead and look at our beam vibration code. So in this particular case, we can either use the design guide from AISC, the first or second edition, and also set our damping factor. The next thing I want to go ahead and look at is our composite tab here. And so here we have just some basic options. So we have some beam deck options here. So how we want to uh, calculate or how we want to define composite members based on the direction of the deck or based on the skew of the deck um, from the beam itself. We also have some stud options, min and max composite action, um, max and min stud spacing. We also have some stud layout options. So if we wanted to do set it to do a segmented stud layout where applicable um, or just set everything to do a uniform stud layout and then also being able to set the stud position in the rib, so a weak or strong stud position. Now when we have some of those set up, uh, we can go ahead and just click OK. I'm going to go ahead and start to model some beams um, themselves. And so I'm going to go up to our graphical input and choose the draw or modify beams. And so under draw beams here, like what you do in, in all types for Risa floor, we're going to go ahead and select a material. And then I'm going to just basically select a shape option or a shape group. In this case, I'm going to do a hot rolled shape and make it a wide flange uh, group. Now in this case, I'm not necessarily defining a, an explicit wide flange because I want the system Resafloor to optimize. And that's really because Resafloor is an optimization program. It's gonna go ahead and optimize members based on the gravity load that we have applied here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use wide flange. I'm also gonna check this box to keep spans continuous. So basically as I draw it, I don't wanna break members if another member M uh, comes in the middle. And I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And then I'm gonna zoom in here and just click the start point and end point of these first couple members. And so now that I've got those two kind of uh, members defined that kind of uh, are the exterior of my, my, my bays, I can go ahead and use the generate beams within bays tool to add these members in the bays automatically. And so I'm gonna do the same thing, choose a hot rolled shape, choose A992 steel and the shape group will stay the same. And then I can select one of these options for beam spacing. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use this number of equal spaces option. I'm gonna change it a couple times. So the first one I'll say I have two equal spaces and then I can just click in the beam. Now I made a mistake here uh, right off the bat. And so I'm gonna do control Z. And what I had done is I didn't set the global angle here to vertical. And so now with doing that, I can go ahead and click in there. Now if I right click, I can go ahead and recall the last dialog, which brings me back to that generate infill beams. And then I can go ahead and set the number of equal spaces for the center span. And then do it one last time for the number of equal spaces in this rightmost span. So really quickly and easily, I've added those infill beams to my floor model. Now the next thing that I need to do and or I can look at is if I just double click on a member that I just added here, we can see the orientation and some different parameters here. But if I click on the design tab, this is where we have some of the composite um, elements. And so you can see here it's automatically designated as a composite member. We could turn on or off that designation or we could choose that when we model members, maybe it doesn't automatically come in as a composite beam. But in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and keep that on. Now, the other part that's important, or one of the other parts that's important to the overall success of this model is the deck itself. So if I go ahead and look at my deck definitions here, we have some different various um, kind of the original deck or the default decks that are defined for wood, metal deck, composite deck, concrete deck in Risa floor. In this case, we're looking at the composite deck. And so I have a predefined Verco deck. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little arrow here to open up the database. And I can go ahead and switch or choose a different deck or a different concrete material that I want to use. So in this case, I'm gonna choose a different manufacturer. I'm gonna go ahead and use Volcraft. So I'm gonna do a two inch VLI Volcraft deck. 
And then from that deck catalog, I can go ahead and pick the, the deck definition. So basically what gauging I want on that deck or the total thickness of the slab that I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm gonna say a four and a half inch normal weight concrete, two inch VLI, 20 gauge deck. I'm gonna choose that. We could set our stud height, our stud diameter, and our um, stud tensile strength. In this case, I'll keep those the same and click OK. Now with my deck defined, the last thing I need to do and is make sure, just in general, this is kind of general Risa 3D, or excuse me, Risa floor, is I need to set the deck direction. And so if I go ahead and look at our deck direction with the default turned on, we can see that the default deck direction is kind of in the horizontal, this Z direction. Now that works for this kind of top section here that I just modeled, but maybe in the bottom here, it doesn't, it doesn't work for that bottom section. So I need to actually change the direction of this deck here. And so to do that, I'm gonna come up to this assign diaphragm edge or deck properties. And I want to uh, assign, basically assign a new deck. And so I'm here, I'm gonna choose composite deck. And instead of plan horizontal, I want it plan vertical. And I want to draw that point to point. And so I'm gonna go ahead here and just draw really quickly point to point that defines the extents of this particular deck. And so using the columns and the walls, I draw that in there. And so now if I go ahead and look at my deck definitions or my deck directions without the default, we can see that that composite deck, that green deck now has the deck direction in the vertical direction that we care about. Now the last thing um, I wanna look at as far as the design parameters are our member design rules. And so member design rules are not unique to composite members. And so we can set the minimax bending or depth requirements for members for steel or concrete or wood, whatever we wanted to. One that's not necessarily specific to composite members, but really um, tends to be uh, used mostly in composite members is this camber. And so here the typical design rule has a minimax camber, the increment, also our percentage of dead load, and then how we're kind of, in, what kind of dead loads included, and then as well as the minimum bead length in which we're gonna camber. And so we can set all these different factors for how in conjunction with our deflection criteria, how camber is going to be calculated. Finally, we need to go ahead and look at some of the loading information. And so if I go ahead and open up our area load definitions, these area load definitions are just defined to define the area load on the model, right? And so we might have a, you know, a standard dead load as well as a standard live load that corresponds with you know, office space or storage space or roof live load or, or whatever have you. The one that I wanna point out here is this VL load. And so that VL load actually stands for the vibration load, which is used in our floor vibration calculation. Now, Risa Floor does a walking excitation floor vibration calculation from that design guide 11 of AISC. And so this is that load in KSF that you're gonna go ahead and put in that is gonna get used in calculating those values. And so you can manipulate this, change this. You don't have to keep these same number of lines. You can add your own line and, and therefore your own kind of uh, area load definition if you want. Now, when I have all the area load definitions defined, when I've got all this information ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and just click to run the analysis. And so I'm just gonna perform the analysis really quick there. Remember, it's doing an optimization, so it's optimizing all the different beams for all the different load cases and load combinations. In this particular model, it's actually doing skip loading as well. So it's doing column and beam skip loading um, on the individual floors. And so I've, I've got two different floor plans in this model. So it's doing that on each individual, individual floor and in, in, in each individual beam or bay, excuse me. And so once the design is complete, we can go ahead and start to look at our results. So if I zoom in here, and let's go ahead and turn off our decking here. We can see just kind of the basic results that are provided for us. So these are the member results. So here in these composite beams, we can see that we've got reactions. So that's the enveloped end reactions on each beam. We also have the beam size and the number of studs, as well as the camber applied, if that's relevant for a particular beam. And so the first thing I wanna do is, before looking at detailed report results, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this design button. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose this W24 by 62 here. And so if I choose that, what we see here is kind of this member redesign tool, if you will. And so this allows us, this shows all the available shapes. Uh, it tells us the material we're using, tells us it's a composite member, and gives us kind of a, a helicopter, an overview of the current results. So here's the bending check, shear check, the deflection ratio, and the max deflection. So it's telling us here, right at the bending check, we're 99.3% utilized for this particular member. That makes a lot of sense as we're using an optimization and it's choosing the, the best member that most optimized member for this particular uh, case. 
Now, if I would go ahead and look at, say, a W24 by 55, automatically it fails and we see the shear resistance provided by the studs is inadequate for the bending check, therefore we're failing in bending. Now, if I come back to this, I can also see that we're using a segmented stud layout. That's because we have a break in this particular member based on the framing. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and switch this to uniform studs and click OK. And if I come back in here, basically see, OK, now we're still at the same bending utilization. But now maybe I don't want to, for this particular case, maybe I don't want to use um, a segmented stud layout. I want to use that uniform stud. So we can go ahead and switch that and it'll give us that updated bending check if anything has changed. In this case, it hasn't. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and click OK and I can make that change. And now I can do that in a variety of ways. I can come to this W36 by 135 girder here. And instead of using this layout, I can go ahead and click on our uniform studs and say, okay, I want 66 uniform studs in there. And that's really just a matter of preference depending on how you choose to design a composite member. Now the other thing I want to show is once the design is done, we can obviously look at these results in our design results table. So this is just the hot rule design results. So it just gives you the member and uh, the stud configuration, whether or not there's camber, and then kind of the max and uh, min reactions at each level. The other way we can look at this is by looking at a detailed report. So if I choose detail and then I'm going to go ahead and click a member, I'm just going to click one of these standard beams here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to look at our load combinations. We see our detailed report for a given member. Now, this detailed report is not explicit, again, to composites. But what is explicit, what is specific to composites, is if we start coming down into the bottom of the uh, report, we see our composite bending. And so in this particular case, that's similar to that number we saw in the design tab. So this 97.6% capacity for composite bending at the location, 12 and a half feet. Now that 12 and a half feet happens to be the midpoint, right, halfway through this beam. And also for the controlling load combination. So in this case, we've got load combination 11 here. So that's uh, dead and live load, most likely. Now we can see all the other deck parameters, the concrete stud information, as well as the composite section properties that are being used here. The other thing that we can see is our deflection checks. So the deflection check, if we were including camber, this would be included here as well. But the deflection checks for pre-dead load, post-dead load, live load, dead load plus live load, all based on those member design rules. Finally, what we have is our vibration checks. So this vibration check lays out all the information for the panel mode, the joist mode, and the girder mode. It also gives us kind of our, our kind of cumulative result, which is our, expect, our expected floor system vibration. So that's that percentage of G. And we can use that to compare that to the expected results for floor vibration in you know, various building systems. Now, if we wanted to look at any of this information, maybe for instance, the vibrations graphically, we can do that as well. And so if I close out of our detailed report, and I am going to go ahead and just turn off our uh, kind of labels here, and I go into our plot options. And under beams, columns, and walls, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to show our vibration acceleration for our color basis, and I also want to show that vibration acceleration for our labels. And so if I turn that on here, now I'm getting that vibration acceleration, and we can see that graphically. So you could take a screenshot of this, you can put this in your report, so you can see kind of a kind of an overview of what the vibration acceleration is for each and all of those beams. So you compare those to um, finalized results and, and ultimately uh, use this to document your vibration for walking excitation in your model. Now I know that was a, a pretty quick kind of dive through uh, the functionality for composite beam design. Uh, for gravity load analysis in RISA 4. Um, if there's any questions or if there's anything that you didn't understand, um, please feel free to reach out to our support group directly. You can reach out to support by contacting support at risa.com. Um, you can also check out some of the other YouTube videos that we have on our, our website or even find our website, risa.com, and, and navigate to the support section where we have a whole host of support articles about vibration analysis or uh, composite beam design as well as many other uh, many other topics as well. So with that, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us for today's session for RISA Live. Uh, make sure you keep a lookout for next week's session and uh, we hope you'll join us then. Thanks very much.